Welcome back for part two of the drywall installation in the bathroom. All right, so it looks like the sins of the past have caught up with us yet again on this project. So it that actually caused me to slow down. So what happened here is I went to install the drywall on this wall. And when I took measurements at the top of the wall, it's 70 and 5 eighths from this wall to the backer board material. And then at the bottom was 71 and a quarter from this wall to the backer board material. So about a difference of about 5 eighths of an inch. And that is not good. Because what that tells me is that this wall, of course, is not plumb. We already knew that, but I didn't know exactly how much out of plumb it was. And I found out by taking measurements. Uh, the other thing, I, other concern that I had is that when I go to put the door up in this doorway later on, if I don't make sure this is nice and plumb or even close to plumb, I could have some really serious problems trying to get the door in and have the jam, you know, not stick out into the opening or kick back that way. So as you can tell by the measurements that I just rattled off, that means that this is kicked back this way. So I really need to kick it this way. All right, so before I started doing any sort of modifications on this wall, what I did is I put up a stud to support this wall because this is a load bearing wall and I didn't want to have any damage result of me trying to modify this doorway. So the next thing I did, I got the drywall down off on the other side of this wall, cut the nails and separate it from the wall and then cut it out with a utility knife. So what we're left with then is just the bare studs. Uh, once I did that, I then pulled out the trimmer stud that was here. That's the stud that goes underneath the header, whereas the king stud right there goes on the side of the header. Then there was a block down here that was acted as a sole plate right down in this area. Got that out of here. And then we were just left with the king stud. So with the king stud, there was a bunch of nails on the side over here that come from that other wall and into the king stud. So I had to cut those out with the oscillating tool. So this was quite an ordeal to be able to get everything out of there so I could move that king stud over. The next thing I had to do was check for flatness across these two walls because we're going to have a door here. And if they're out of plane, then that's going to look funny. The door is not going to sit right in the opening. So as before I started to move this king stud, I checked to see how much I could actually move it. So I grabbed a block of wood and a sledgehammer and then I just knocked this over as much as I could. And then again, I was checking to make sure that it was still in plane with the other wall as I did that. So it has moved probably around a quarter of an inch at the bottom here, which means that this whole thing is kind of shifted like this. All right, so before we go ahead and put the drywall up on this wall, I want to do a couple last checks here. And the first thing I did was put this mud ring up so I don't forget that. So that's nice and screwed off there, nice and tight. Now I'm using a 5 8 inch mud ring here because this box is a little bit back of the stud face. So I decided to go with a 5 8 inch mud ring instead of a half inch mud ring. And when I checked it with a piece of drywall, the mud ring is nice and flush with the drywall. The other thing I did was make sure that this is nice and plumb. So I put a level on the side here and this is nice and plumb and ready to go. And the last thing to talk about on this wall is where all the shims sit. Like for example right there you can see a shim right here. I don't want to be putting a screw too close to the shim because they will have a little bit of a hump. So I had to take into account where I put the shims in the wall. So I'm probably going to put a screw here and then I'll probably put the next screw away up here somewhere. Here's a diagram I drew for the top board that I cut on the floor in the garage. The left side of the board has a slight angle to compensate for the front wall being out of plumb. Again, I left a 1 8 inch gap at the left and right edges of the board and I left a 1 16th to 1 8th inch gap around the junction box's mud ring using a roto zip. All right, so we've got this top piece of drywall up on the wall and it's fairly tight to the ceiling as you can see right there. It took a little bit of effort to get it up there by myself. This stuff's pretty heavy. It's a little bit heavier than regular drywall so it was a little bit of a challenge but I put a screw in right here in the middle after I drew a line on there so I uh, set a screw kind of halfway in, pushed the board up, and then sunk the screw right here to hold the drywall up so I can get, until I can get some more screws up on the wall. So I've got uh, several screws along the bottom, right along there I've got several screws. And then I'll just finish screwing off the board the rest of the way around. 
All right, so the last thing to do here on this wall is just to put the bottom board in. Now, I also need to make sure I notch out for this area right here where the thermostat wiring is going to come out for the floor heat. I also have to remember that I'm leaving a one half inch gap at the floor. So I don't want to make this notch too high in the board. One other thing to point out is that we have lost some of this stud in the corner for attaching the drywall on this wall. Because remember we kicked the king stud that way. So I may have to sister with some sort of blocking alongside here in order to be able to attach the drywall in this corner. As you can see down here I did put a block in because there's a bow actually in this stud. So that block is actually positioned a little bit forward of this stud here. So that will help to make sure the wall is nice and flat. I only needed a couple blocks in the corner to attach the drywall, so I drilled a couple staggered holes through the second stud with a one inch spade bit. I could then pre-drill the blocks then attach them with three inch screws. So I've got the two blocks installed. They are nice and flush. And as you saw, I wedged some shims in there just to keep them tight so they wouldn't move. Up here in this area where I need to put the first screw, we should have enough material. It's about 7 eighths of an inch. And I can get the gun in just fine right there. So no problem. So that's all taken care of. And now we can move on. I just have to clean the area up and then put the roxel back in. All right, so we are moving along here. We've got the second board in on this left wall. Got the notch down there for our floor heat. That looks pretty good. Next we're on to the right wall and I needed to avoid ending the drywall in the middle of the nail plates. Also tapered drywall at the floor is less of a factor on this wall where the vanity and the toilet will be installed. Alright because there are so many obstacles in this wall I've got a ton of plates and we've got pipes everywhere. And so what I did is I actually made a little bit of a a guide for myself. So this column here on the first stud is plates. So it tells me this plate, this first one is 17 and 3 quarters to 23 inches from the top of the wall. And then this column here is just all the screw locations I plan on putting the screws in on that first stud. And I just did that for all the other studs too. And I marked out the gap. You can see the gap right over here. This gap and also that gap in the corner. All right, so I've got this top sheet of drywall installed, and you probably notice that the box is a little bit chipped up there, and that's because I tried to cut with the roto zip uh, with the board in place here. And I messed up a couple times and decided, you know what, that's just not for me. I'm just going to do it in the garage on the floor, make sure I take precise measurements, make the cutouts in the wall board in the garage, and then come in here and install it in the bathroom. So that actually worked out, got that right the first time after going through uh, a couple boards and wasting some material. So that's all done and everything's nice and tight to the ceiling up there as you can see. Alright so I've got the bottom board installed. You can see the cutouts right there for the shutoffs and the drain turned out perfectly. I must have measured that a million times to get that right. Then we'll come down here to the shutoff for the toilet right down there. I just had to make a small cutout in the Dens Armor using the Roto Zip. Alright, so let's talk about what I'm doing over here. So, what I have done is I've taken some of the screws out within about two feet of this seam on the drywall. And I've also done the same thing on the backer board material. I've taken the screws out along the seam and also just a few so that the board moves away from the wall. So what's going on here is if I press on the drywall and I press on the backer board material, you can see there's a little bit of a lip right there. So I don't want to be trying to feather this out right in this area. I want to make this a seamless transition. So what I did was I cut 
a shim on the table saw. I think this is a little less than a sixteenth of an inch thick. So if I press on this and press on that at the same time, you can see they almost line up perfectly. So what I'm going to do, I made the shim really long. So I can pull the board away, stuff the shim behind it, and up behind the back of the board. I just need to get up probably about in this area here. I have a light so I can shine into the hole and be able to see that. And then once I can see that, I'll drill a hole into the shim, sink a screw, and then I will cut this off right there in the seam with an oscillating tool. So that should work, I hope. I'm going to do that all the way down the wall. Obviously, since this board is here, that's one of the obstacles I'm dealing with. But down below, it'll be a lot easier. Okay, so you can see the shim is stuffed in behind that board and all the way up to that first hole right there, I believe it is. Okay, so on this one, I just drew a line right there at an inch and a half, just so I know that it's in far enough. And I'm going to slide that in. It's about right there. That should be good enough. I probably don't want to sink the screws all the way down at this point. I just want to get them started at least. That's because I need to still be able to pull the board away enough to get more shims in here. All right, so I've got this seam all shimmed out now, all the way down to the floor. That looks much better. It's nice and flush all the way across for the most part. So since I am new at doing drywall, and mudding and taping, I wanted to give myself every advantage possible by making sure that seam was nice and flush. So got that taken care of and we can move on. All right, so there you have it. There's the drywall installation on the walls in the bathroom. And it's very interesting on this project as I get to a new phase, I think I got everything covered. It'd be a piece of cake. And then I run into obstacles that I didn't expect. Of course, when you're new at something like this, that tends to happen. Uh, it took me a little while to figure out how to address some of those issues, but we got past it, and we'll just keep on moving. So hopefully this information was helpful, and thanks for watching. See links in the description below. Comment, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check us out on social media. And thanks for watching.